Yo, what up gamers, I'm Verpro Dark, and today we're going to be playing a Phyllis ADC with the Nami. Going to be facing off against the Kai'Sa. Going to be able to land a little bit of poke there. Obviously with the Phyllis we don't have too much level 1 kill pressure, but, you know, we can still put out some damage. Especially if she's going to be walking up there without Valkaz. Rookie mistake. Going to get punished for that. Going to give us a slight advantage. Yeah, so we don't want to over push here since they're not really able to push back yet. We want to make sure that when the second wave arrives, we're going to be getting level 2 first, but don't want to overpush either. Kind of have already slightly overpushed, but it's fine. So long as it's not hitting the turret, that's okay. It's just going to also give us less room to be playing aggressively is the issue. Yeah, so, like, as you can see, we're not going to be able to pressure them too hard on the third wave here, as we usually would be able to. It's because I went a little bit too aggressive, uh, pushing that first wave. That poke is also not worth it. I <laughs> just will not for the turret. We're doing fine, though. Here we go, Kessa stepping up a little bit too far. It's a shame I didn't get the hitter with the uh, Q, because that could have been a decent amount of damage. Ideally, I would like to triple weapon combo her here. Oh, wow, she's just walking right up to it. There we go. That was actually only a double weapon combo, but still. Actually, I could have played that better. I could have also rooted the Valkos since Kessa was going to die to the uh, purple Q no matter what anyway. Could have just waited a second to root the Valkos as well. But that's alright. He might not have died anyway, but could have at least forced some summoners. Alright, so now we just want to make sure we shove this as fast as we can. Make us miss some farm. And give us plenty of time to back for items. See if he wants to cancel the back. No, it looks like not. Perfect. In that case, we're going to grab the Berserkers Greaves and a Potion here. Mainly grabbing Berserkers. It's just very nice on the fellas in general. I like it on the mobile champions. Especially, I want to get into lane here as fast as I can, making sure I'm missing as little CS as possible. The moon speed to get back into lane is going to be very helpful there in that regard. So here we go. Back into lane. Barely missed any farm whatsoever. Just barely got there in time to get that melee as well. So that's nice. Plus 20 gold. Unfortunately, going to be missing some farm as well because of the... Lack of AD. It happens. But one good thing about the Berserkers as well is that it will definitely enable us to be able to dodge more Valka skill shots. Okay, I just want to flash on Kai'Sa here. Just to set up this gank for Zed. Nice. I actually could have probably just rid of the Valkas as well. Again, <laughs> missed out on that opportunity, but that's fine. Oh, wow. Alright, and there we go. Only reached them there thanks to the Berserkers, so they, they actually paid off really hard. That's very nice. Oh, I didn't realize my blue was running out there, my bad. We're not meant to be using this uh, uh, weapon order. I was meant to get rid of purple first, but that's okay. Alright, goodbye Nami. At least I'm alright. Oh, just barely not there in time to get the cannon. Maybe I should have just walked into the guy's so W. Might have been worth it if I got me the cannon. Alright, there we go. Got rid of the purple. Now we actually have a good weapon combination. Alright, so we're just gonna be more or less keeping the wave here. We don't need to push this. We've also got Talia on bot side, so... Oh, actually, with Kaiser overstepping here, definitely a good time to go in on her. Ooh, that is a mess of bubble. Yeah, bigger of a step from Kaisa there. 
uh, very, I was not expecting the enemies to actually overstep there. I was mainly just like basically zoning her from farm. Using the fact that she couldn't step that far to go aggressive or to get some farm, but uh, yeah, she tried to. And she gets punished. We could probably go for a couple of platings here. Just gonna get these two platings down and then just focus on wiping out the wave, then we can back. Just maximizing the amount of gold we get for this uh, time that we have alone in lane. Alright, so now we're ending up with green and blue, which is not the ideal weapon combination you would uh, like to have at this point with green. You'd prefer to have green and purple because that way you get some CC out of the uh, green snipes. But it's not the worst. Yeah, like both blue and purple are good weapons individually, so even if they don't combo together too well, it's not, the, it's not you know, like a massive deal. Alright, so getting back into lane here, see how much CS we can snatch up from under the turret here. Okay, Nami get coming in from the river. Just gonna try and uh, push back against their push, try and keep them here. Ooh. My bad, I actually could have healed her. Alright, nice. Kaiser made a mistake there, stepping up that far at least. Definitely needed to just step back and uh, level call, see what he could do. Alright, so I'm in a bit of an awkward spot here. So Valkos is quite low, but I'm still even lower, and he definitely outranges me pretty hard. Oh. So yeah, I can't really step up there, and now I'm also going to be wary about this potential Warwick dive. Okay, it doesn't look like he's coming for me, and I got Nami coming up behind me soon. So I can probably just stay here and at least farm this wave. Alright, also got Zed coming up here. Might be a good opportunity to just shove the wave, because I was thinking I would just have to back and leave it. Right, nice, oh god. Okay, nice, Nami ult. That was a very fast peel from the Warwick ult, that was really good. Okay, mm hmm We can just go for this plating, I was actually gonna back, but uh, okay, also gonna be Talia. Gonna go for the dive here. It's really awkward. The <laughs> wave is just barely not under turret, though. I'm gonna have to shove this in. Ah, just barely missed on the cannon. Alright, here we go. Oh, wow, that didn't kill her. Oh my god, that is so awkward. Ah, <laughs> uh, that should have been my kill. That's so sad. She, wa she wasn't like 3 HP there. Oh well. Oh god. Okay. Leah keeping the Vlad at bay. Alright, that worked out pretty well. Good shit. So just gonna take this opportunity to talk about the runes a little bit. So we're gonna be running the Conqueror here because we're gonna be going for the Phantom Dancer of Philos build with the Kraken Slayer. Uh, the build is very much focused on attack speed, but we're not actually gonna be maxing the W second because just the lethality is much better. But basically that build is going to focus on, you know, quite a lot of hits rather than each individual hit hurting a lot. Like if you're going to be going Collector second, which is probably the typical standard second item on Aphelios. Uh, but obviously this build is going to give us a lot of time to just stack up the Conqueror since we're going to be auto-attacking a lot. So it's going to benefit a lot from that. Not going to be getting as much value out of the PTA with this build. So not going to be running that. However, besides that, just going to be running typical precision runes in the other... Uh, columns and then also be running sorcery on the second tree and that is not too typical on Aphelios but it's definitely the best uh, slot for him in my in the secondary page in my opinion it's definitely something you should all, pretty much always do on Aphelios I can't imagine uh, like most people are still doing domination secondary and I just don't think that's anywhere nearly as good I don't think it was good uh, ever since um, Ravenous Hunter got nerfed eh, like ages ago and the, the free AD that you get out of Sorcery Secondary is just, you know, much better. Okay, going a bit aggressive there, going to back off though, we see the Warwick. Okay, don't want to overstep too hard here, we don't see the Warwick anymore, but we know he is bot side. In fact, he might even be on Drake. Okay, 
Okay, we're just gonna pretend we're not here. Oh. Alright, <laughs> I've seen better Namials. Oh. You know what? This works. Nice. Can have some more work wasn't on Drake so they don't get that. Can maybe look for a dive on Kaisa here. Just gonna ping Nami to, uh, to stop her back. Let's go for this. Ah, oh, I just barely took the last tower shot. Oh well. Not bad. But look, the important thing to note here is just how much CS Kaisa misses out on. Unfortunately, she did also get a pretty big shutdown from me. So was it really worth it? Well, probably not. But, you know, there's there's some upside to this. It's not just a regular one-for-one -one trade. We do also get far more CS out of that exchange than she does. Also, almost got the turret. That's fine. I'll get that on whenever I next get back into the lane. Alright, now I think they might be on Drake for real. Oh yeah, they're on that. They didn't have vision of that bar, so they were actually aiming for the Drake. Okay. Wow, this Warwick is just ignoring me. Nice. Didn't get one shot by Vlad, nice. I guess he didn't have ult. And we get the cannon, let's go. Should be able to make quick work of this turret as well. Nice, and Nami leaving it to be solo gold for me. It's pretty good. Should be pretty safe to just walk in here. I was gonna check the Gromp, seems it's down, but we can still get the pink. Actually, it's about to spawn, we can just get it. There we go. Better to get that Gromp and deny it from Warwick than go for the other wave. Okay, just gonna stick to Talia here. Make sure Kaisa can't get her, and there we go. So yeah, uh, getting that Grump may have been a little bit less gold overall than just going for the wave, for sure. But at the same time, denying it from Warwick or denying it from the enemy team in general is pretty valuable. So I would always prioritize a camp, an enemy camp, over your own waves. And it looks like maybe there will be a collapse to go for on Olaf here. Let's see if we can make this work. I wonder if I can just hit him through the wall. Yep, nice. Ah, he's running the opposite way though. Alright, nice. Free goal for me. Alright, if Zed wants to keep shoving top, he can go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna rotate the world's mid. There's still a top turret to take, but there's no platings to be taken from it. Ah, shit. I didn't expect Yasu to shove this wave. Actually, I can still get some of it. Yes, got the cannon. So ideally Yasuo should be bought, but I can't really force him to go there. At least he's kind of protecting me here. There's less risk of the enemies just going on me there. Oh nice! <laughs> I stole the raptor, I didn't even mean to. Alright, just kind of waiting for my team to... Group. In the meantime, I'll be able to go for killing Warwick here. Alright, it wasn't really needed. That's fine. Maybe just keep pressuring top here then. Since I'm already here. Alright, I need to be focusing on getting rid of purple first again. So if any of you don't know about the ideal like weapon rotation for Aphelios, I've just recently made a guide on that. I'll link it in the description. Very important for mastering a fellows. Alright, probably not too much to do here. I can already afford to be swords, so just gonna go ahead and get that and then we can regroup. Okay, so there's not much point going mid here when they just wiped out the mid wave. So instead I like to go bot. Unfortunately we've also got Yasuo going bot with us, it seems. Which is very annoying because he wasn't bot early when I wanted him to go bot. So I guess instead we'll just do golems. Can just head over to golems here so we're not sharing farm with anybody. Uh, 
There we go. Some nice free farm, so XP. Now see if I can do anything here. Oh yeah, that's gonna be easy. Okay. Oh, but the waves! It's so hard to farm this game, man. Nice. I was actually thinking of just forcing his ult, but him walking into me is uh, even better. Took off a lot of my HP, but we live. He doesn't. Suppose we could try and cheese there, but I don't know if they have vision or not. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go for the Raptors then. Oh shit, I got rid of blue first again, man, my bad. It's not paying enough attention to what ammo I've got. I could have easily gotten rid of purple first here. Oh well. So, in the sh interest of uh, nurturing farm, can we go for the wolves here? Gonna check the crump, not up. Would head for the bot wave, but we should probably get the strike first. Okay, there's not gonna be much farm for me on mid lane, so I'm just gonna head over to the red buff. Make sure that you're always trying to avoid sharing form with your teammates as much as possible. So if your mid laner goes bot, you go mid. If your top laner goes mid, you go top. You know, wherever there's farm for you to be taking that you don't have to share with your teammates, you want to do that. Obviously, you don't want to, like, perma camp another lane. Uh, but you do want to at least, like, shove one or two waves there. Uh, just pretty much as many waves as you can get, a w can get away with without dying. And then you rotate towards mid or wherever your team is to group there. And if by any chance they're like grouped on Drake and the enemy team are also like five man grouped on Drake, you can just actually just stay top like pushing. Because it's gonna take you too long to rotate. Oh, I need to be careful here. Oh god. Okay. We could have executed that cleaner. Oh shit, I'm in trouble here though. Where am I? Wow, they're just ignoring me. I'm sure they could have run me down there. Alright, cast no flash. Alright, let's get rid of white hair. Green and blue, we meet again. Ah, oh, fucking minions in the way, man. Oh well. Alright, Raptors back up. So I could obviously melt these a lot faster if I just use blue, but I'm really annoyed at how I keep, uh, oh god. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Really annoyed at how I keep wasting uh, blue before purple, when it should be the other way around, so. Trying to minimize my blue usage, so that misclick on blue key was kind of awkward. But anyway, we can already back from Infinity Edge, so we'll go ahead and do that. Also, just go for the long sword. Probably gonna build that into Lost Whisper. Then I have an amazing amount of armor, but could also build it into a Bloodthirster in theory, I guess. But I think we're having just uh, we're doing just fine in terms of surviving, so I don't think that's gonna be necessary. We can just go for the full damage build. So again, could use blue to wave clear faster here, but gonna try and get rid of purple first. Besides, I don't necessarily want to shove this as hard as I can, because I want to shove this next wave as well. And so the longer I wait before shoving the first wave, the less deep I am in enemy territory to shove this wave, you know? So there we go. Still right about the middle of the lane, also gives us time to go for the raptors here. Could also go bot, but I think that chase will be over by the time I get there. So just go for the guaranteed reward of going for the raptors. Alright, maybe there is actually something to do here, though. Close. He would have died there if not for the barrier. Oh, shit. 
Oh god. Okay, he didn't have ult this fine. Pretty ambitious from him. Oh god, that guy has trouble though. Shit. Ah, this is kinda close. If I managed to get rid of purple faster, I would have had red ult available. That would have actually probably saved me there. Oh well. And yeah, that was awkward. I tried to ping my team to realize that uh, I was getting collapsed on as fast as possible, but they weren't quite able to react in time. It was a bit hard too, to be fair. He came out of nowhere. Oh well. Alright, and that's going to be the surrender. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Later gamers.